It is now five days after the tea dance tragedy here at the Hyatt Hotel, and accusations concerning the cause of it are beginning to surface. It was disorganized, confusing, and often irrelevant. 114 people died when two skywalks collapsed in the lobby of Kansas City's Hyatt Regency Hotel in the summer of 1981. And the world wanted to know why. This is the news, the 6 o'clock report with Scott Feldman, Christine Kraft, Steve Brad, and Mike Plackey. Today, Kansas City began to mourn and bury its dead. Family, friends, and neighbors, at least 800 people gathered for a farewell to members of an all-woman mariachi band killed in the Hyatt collapse. Grieving families demanded answers and accountability. Work continues today on the tracing of the cause of the Hyatt accident. Michael Mahoney reports. The search for why those skywalks crashed Friday night proceeded on several fronts. Investigators, including some hired privately by the management and the ownership of the hotel, poured over the rubble. Most of the wreckage was being hauled to the landfill. Important pieces were taken to a nearby warehouse, and the hotel was attracting a different kind of tourism. Something like that, people remember for a long, long time. Uh, a terrible tragedy has, has, has fallen upon the city. Three days after the collapse, the federal government stepped in. The government investigation as to what went wrong at the Hyatt Regency gets underway today with one of three government inspectors touring the rubble. Dr. Edward Frank would lead the National Bureau of Standards Investigation. Frank won't comment on what he's found yet, but he will in time. Inspections, lab testing, and Dr. Frank's team wanted KMBC 9's footage of the tea dance. The $50 million hotel had broken ground March 16, 1978, owned by the Crown Center Redevelopment Corporation, part of Hallmark. The higher Regency had trouble from the start. In construction, one part of the roof collapsed, and a worker was killed in a separate accident. OSHA violations came to light. In June 1979, as the Hyatt Skywalks were being constructed, across town, the roof of the Kemper Arena caved in during a storm. The owners of the Hyatt wanted assurances their hotel was safe. And after extra checks by the hotel's structural engineers, they got it. The elegance of the brand new Hyatt Regency is almost breathtaking. The Jewel of Crown Center opened July 1st, 1980. But the trouble was already beginning. The skywalks were starting to sag under their own weight. The reason, the arrangement of the hangar rods holding up the structures. When the blueprints of the city approved design came out, they showed one continuous rod supporting the fourth and second floor walkways. But it was built with two support rods. This is Scott Feldman along with Michael Mahoney at the National Bureau of Standards in suburban Washington. The NBS's findings were released in May 1982, 10 months after the collapse. Ruth Angstead viewed our live telecast from Washington intently. Survivors watched in Kansas City as investigators revealed the skywalks were underdesigned, didn't meet city code, and the flaw should have been easy for engineers to spot. If you started to make those computations, uh, you would see that you were in trouble. And so it was a, a really comprehensive uh, uh, investigation, and I think to this day remains the definitive uh, account of what happened. You know, to a layman, you look at it and say it's the same thing, right? What was the difference? Big difference. My name is Bill Quatman. I'm an attorney and an architect in Missouri. Bill Quatman teaches lessons learned from the Skywalks collapse to schools and firms around the country. There were six hangar rods on each skywalk, hung through sets of C-shaped channels welded together to create a box beam. At the bottom of each, a small nut and washer. Together, these pieces of metal were supporting 72 tons of weight between the second and fourth floor skywalks. It's about the weight of 28 Dodge Ram pickup trucks. Imagine those hanging up in the atrium steel. Engineering firm Gillum Kalako originally designed the skywalks to be held up with one continuous rod strung through both floors. But it was going to be difficult to make. So subcontractors proposed hanging the second floor skywalk from the fourth floor using a second set of rods. A change that would double the amount of weight on the upper walkway connection. And here's a good example. If I climbed up a flagpole and held it with my hands, I'm holding up one person. If you said it looks like fun, let me climb up below you and hold on to the flagpole. You're holding up one person. We each hold a single person by the connection to that rod. Let's change the example. I climb up the flagpole, hold on with my hands. You said, Bill, looks like fun. Let me hang on to your ankles. So what happened? 
I'm now holding up two people. Lead design engineer Dan Duncan oversaw the approval of shop drawings of the flawed change. Pay attention to small details, and that's the message I tell our architects and engineers is, don't overlook the small things because this was a detail as big as my fist that failed. A small feature, an error with immense consequences. The focus of this remodeled hotel is the replacement for the skywalks, this corridor called the West Terrace. Just two and a half months after the tragedy, a redesigned Hyatt Hotel opened its doors. Several of the principals who were involved in the design of the Hyatt Skywalks were in Jefferson City today, answering questions before the state board that regulates architects and engineers. The board revoked the licenses of engineer Jack Gillum, whose professional seal was on each structural drawing, and lead design engineer Dan Duncan. Criminal charges were never filed, but dozens of lawsuits were most settled out of court. You gotta, you gotta find justice in some way for her and her memory. And for some touched by the tragedy, like this Kansas City attorney, reminders of the disaster are all around. You know, what are the odds that all these years later, I would you know, go to college, somehow go to law school, somehow get a job, somehow switch jobs, and somehow wind up in this office building where every day I look out at that hotel.